So this tutorial is over the rustic crochet placemat. I am going to be doing this tutorial live. I'm super excited. I love doing live tutorials so that you can ask questions directly when the tutorial is happening. So how the tutorial will go. If this is your very first live stream tutorial with me, I start by doing the tutorial. I ignore the chat for the most part, but uh, I will peek over there from time to time. What I want to focus on is just making sure that I do the tutorial that way. If you're watching after the live has gone, like a replay, if you're watching a replay, you can just get the tutorial because that's what you came here for. And then after the tutorial, I will do the Q&A session where you can ask questions, crochet related questions, and I will just engage and answer those questions and even possibly reach out to anyone that is in the chat for help if I'm like, what, what do you do? What is your best suggestion to answer this question? So that is how this will play out. First tutorial, second Q&A. If I haven't introduced myself already, my name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for being here today. This tutorial is over this placemat right here. So awesome. I love the vibe, love the farmhouse, calming just vibe that is going on. If at any point in this video you do like how I teach, how, what you see, how things are just displayed in this video, please like this video or if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering all things crochet related, whether it's tips and tricks, tutorials, giveaways, fun live tutorials like this. I try to do a live tutorial every third Friday. This month it hit on the fourth Friday though, just because the month hit kind of funky, but you will see a live tutorial where I do a Q and A session after the tutorial. And I do that just to Again, if you have any questions regarding the tutorial or anything else crochet related, I engage with you and it's a really cool time for us to just get together. Okay, so this pattern is free. I made this pattern, put it on my Google Docs. So here is a link to my Google Docs. I also put in the chat uh, uh, the link. So hopefully all you have to do is click on it and be good to go. Um, this is free you can have it. <laughs> what I'm hoping for is that you find it so easy and that you think it's so beautiful that you just make as many as your heart desires. Change the colors if you want. Make it holiday related, uh, make it seasonal if that is something that you want to do. Just play with it. Make it your own, really. Make as many as you want. <laughs> Here is the pattern for it. If you have any trouble with the Google Docs, like you go to the link and it says request access to this document, just hit request access and I will instantly grant you access. It's not a big deal. It just seems to be one of those things that every single time I release a Google Doc pattern, I get like two people that have to request access. And I'm like, that's really weird. But okay, so if you have any trouble with this pattern, contact me through any of my socials. Say, Tiffany, I can't, I can't get your pattern. Or just request, request access and I'll grant you access. It's not a big deal. All right, I'm very excited. Let's get started. So the pattern or the, the materials that I use to make this placemat right here is 100% cotton yarn. So I prefer that you use 100% cotton yarn on your placemat. Why? Why do you recommend 100% cotton? Well, placemats, the job of a placemat is really to catch any spills, any mess. And when, uh, cotton is really good at absorbing and it's also really easy to clean. So if you need to wash your placemat. Just throw it in the washing machine. And I wouldn't put it in the dryer though. What I would do is I would put it in the washing machine, gentle cycle or delicate cycle, let it, do it, let it do its thing. And then when you pull the placemats out of the washing machine, I would block it. What I noticed is that it does kind of create like this hourglass shape to the natural pattern, which I thought was really weird because I stuck to the same stitch count in each row, but there still was a bit of an hourglass shape to the placemat itself. 
Now, to put in perspective, I have purchased placemats before in the past that were material placemats, and after I washed the placemat, it too lost shape. So I think the crochet placemat is great because you can then block it. If you have no idea how to block, you've never blocked before, I did make a tutorial on how to block three different ways. It's super easy, but if you've never done it before, I can see how you'd feel a little bit lost. So if you do want to, after this tutorial, check out my how to block tutorial. I do have that on my YouTube channel. You can just sift through my mini videos and you will find it. And it's really easy peasy. I think you'll be okay. <laughs> After this tutorial, I will go ahead and I will add a link to that video just for ease and convenience. Okay, so the colors that I used were, uh, were Lily Sugar and Cream in the colors Jute and Indigo. Of course, you can use whatever colors you wanna use. Have fun with it, make it your own. The crochet hook that we will be using is the I9 or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. I do have a crochet hook that is an I9 5.25 millimeter crochet hook. Either one's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, yeah, so other things that you will see here are scissors, a yarn needle to weave in your ends, and a blocking mat is optional. Very cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right in here. Okay, we're gonna start with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends. Create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook, and be ready to go. So the crochet stitch that I'm using for this placemat is the seed, the seed crochet stitch. So if you know what that is, then you're good to go. For all those that don't, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So this pattern is in a multiple of two chains. So if you want to make these placemats bigger or make any other adjustments, just know that there is a multiple stitch count requirement. It's in multiple of two. So I begin my placemat in a chain 40. Where is that button? Chain 40. There you go. For this particular tutorial, because I am doing it live, I'm going to do a smaller increment. I'm just going to do like a chain 10, just to get me through and get through faster. Two, three, four, five, six, nine, and 10. Perfect. Okay, so for row one, we are going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V-stitches, one, two, single crochet. And then you chain one, skip the next chain, and single crochet in the following chain. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the following chain. I hope that this yarn isn't too dark for everybody. Chain one, Skip one, single crochet, chain one, skip one, and you will single crochet in the very last chain here. Let's move on to row two. So for row two, we will chain one. We will turn our work. We will single crochet in the first stitch, and then we will single crochet in that chain one space. Awesome. Right, and now we repeat the pattern. Chain one, skip over the single crochet stitch, and single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip over the single crochet stitch, and single crochet in the chain one space. All right, and then you just repeat that pattern. You will end row two by single crocheting in the very last stitch space. Boom, there we go. All right, moving on to row three. Row three, we'll chain one. We will turn our work. We will single crochet in the very first stitch. Cool. And then the next stitch is a single crochet stitch. So we're gonna skip it. We're gonna chain one hop over that single crochet stitch, and single crochet in the chain one space. Then chain one, hop over that single crochet stitch, and single crochet 
in that chain one space and then repeat across. This is going to be a really quick tutorial because the seed stitch is super, super easy. And then we single crochet in the very last stitch space. Boom, just like that. All right, this pattern, all you're doing is repeating row two and row three, back and forth, row two, row three, row two, row three, all the way to finishing the pattern. For this pattern, you will always single crochet in the first stitch, you will always single crochet in the last stitch, and then in between, you will chain one to hop over a single crochet and make your single crochet stitches in the chain one spaces. I hope that wasn't confusing. To switch colors. So some people, when they switch colors, they will keep the yarn on their crochet hook or they will keep the yarn attached. They will not cut the yarn. They will just allow the yarn to drag up to the next time you're using the yarn, that color yarn. I don't like that look. I think that that look creates some potential for sloppiness. Some people can make it look great, don't, don't get me wrong. But for this particular pattern, I didn't put a border on it because I really liked how the sides of this placemat looked, okay? So I did not carry the color up to the next time I used it. Every time I ended a color, I cut my yarn, okay? Cut my yarn, leaving a long enough tail for me to weave in my ends. And then I yarn over, pull that yarn through the loop on my crochet hook, and pull tight for a slip knot. Okay, cool. To reattach my new color, start with a tail long enough for me to weave in my ends, create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook, great. And then you slip stitch into the very first stitch, first stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull all the way through for a slip stitch and that attaches the new color. You will chain one and then you will go about the row like you would normally go about the row. So single crochet in the very first stitch space. Next stitch is a single crochet, so I have to chain one to hop over it. Chain one space, I'm gonna single crochet in that. Then sing, or chain one to hop over that single crochet and single crochet in the chain one space. All right, so that is how I color change. And then yes, it does leave a lot of tails to weave in. And believe me, I had a lot of tails <laughs> to weave in at the end of this project. In the pattern, in the pattern, I do tell you, I do show you here, let me, I took a picture. I do have like a color A, you're gonna use this many rows. And then color B, this is when you'll switch to color B, this is what you'll when you'll switch to color A. And I went through all the way to the end of this placemat for you so that you would know exactly how and when I did my color changes. Now when it comes to blocking your work. So when it comes to actually blocking your work, I did take a picture of the mat. I took lots of pictures because pictures are helpful. So here is what it looked like when I blocked it. So the project itself should measure 12 inches top to bottom and 18 inches side to side. So depending on how you're looking at your placemat, it's either going to be 12 inches wide or 18 inches wide, depending on how, how you're looking at it. Because, oops, this one. This right here is 12 inches and this is how we're working it, right? So 12 inches this way and 18 inches this way. So when I was blocking my placemat, I blocked it because there was an hourglass shape to it. Even though every row had the same number of stitches, 
it still had an hourglass. So you really need to get this placemat as wet as some, you know, absorbed with water as possible so that way it's as moldable as possible. And then you will be able to stretch it out and get that dimension and then wait for it to dry. And then it turns out like that. Boom. So cool. And that's it. That's it. That's how you make this placemat. Super easy peasy. It's again, it surprised me at how much I loved it. I loved how the colors played out. Again, color is going to be important. It's amazing how important color can be to make or break a project, but it's simple and it has that rustic farmhouse vibe, which is awesome. And yeah, so the tutorial is now complete. I don't really have anything else to add to the tutorial part itself. I am now ready for the Q&A session of this video.